Have you ever wondered how one can represent and control rotations in 3D space? Although they are challenging to learn, quaternions present a particularly powerful way for a number of reasons. One being that it avoids gimbal lock, and another being that they are very computationally efficient. Over the past month or so, I've been teaching myself quaternions in order to be able to apply them to control a rocket. During this process, I found it quite challenging to teach myself to use them for PID control. So I decided to create this video as a resource for people who desire to learn quaternions specifically for PID control. Now, there are many people who can teach this topic way better than I can. So instead of focusing on teaching, I'm creating this video as a consolidation of papers and videos that I found useful during my learning process. Now, it's important to note that at this point, I'd only learned up to calculus too. And although it's not necessary to have learned up to this point, a background in derivatives and integrals will be necessary for learning PIDs. Now, the first video I would recommend you watch is a video by 3Blue1Brown, and it's called Visualizing Quaternions with Stereographic Projection. Now, this video is a lot to take in, so you may have to watch it a couple times, but it really, really helps you nail that intuition that you need to be able to understand quaternions. And the next video is also by 3Blue1Brown, and it's called Quaternions in 3D Rotation, Explained Interactively. After watching this video, please go towards the description where you find a link to a website he created in collaboration with Ben Eater, and this allows you to explore quaternions interactively. So this allows you to explore how this intuition you learned in the previous video can be applied to spatial rotations. And furthermore, this interactive nature where you can engage with the visualizations allows you to explore and really see how it works for yourself further building that intuition. Now this intuition will be really necessary for the next steps. Now the next thing I would recommend that you do is go over to the Quaternion Wikipedia page. Now this page is quite long and it's quite complex, but to be honest, there's still much of it that I don't understand. However, there's a lot in there that will help you in your learning process. For example, this page contains much of the math that you will need to be able to use Quaternions for PID control. Now, how do you learn to use these quaternions that we just learned the intuition for to be able to actually control something? First thing you need to do is actually learn a bit of PID control. Now, the first resource I would recommend is a PID control video by Brian Douglas. It sort of gives an overview of what PID controllers are and how they can be used. I would also recommend doing a bit of your own research into how PID controllers can be used. Now the next video on an Arduino PID controller actually walks you through an example of how you can write your own PID controller. I personally found this video very useful as it gave me a reference to look at when I was creating my own controller. Finally, I would recommend reading a paper called Full Quaternion Based Attitude Control for a Quad Rotor by Emil Fresk and George Nikolopoulos. I found that this paper was really what formed that bridge between my understanding of quaternions my understanding of PID control. If you've done all this, you should have a rough idea of how you can use quaternions to represent 3D rotations and also control them using a PID controller. Now, let's get into a brief and high level overview of my simulation to see how I applied these concepts to create a controller. First, you get the error term from the current orientation, and then you plug this error term into the PID controller along with angular velocity, which functions as the derivative, and then outputted from this PID is an array of torques, which is plugged back into the system, and then the whole process is repeated all over again. And let's see how the system responds to error when the rocket is starting from a pitched over position. As we can see, it corrects itself. Keep in mind, this controller isn't really tuned at all yet, as you can see from the subpar response. However, we can still see the error goes to zero. If you still have questions after this, I would highly, highly recommend asking others through platforms like Discord and Reddit. I found it to be really beneficial to get that additional input. Anyways, that's all for me. I hope this was helpful.